Welcome back guys, Automotive Inc. Today we are going LED on the front of the 09 Outback. Now this will be a similar procedure on Legacy and Outback from 2007-2010. Um, pretty easy to do. I'm going to install Sealite. That is a brand that I have been using for years. They are affordable. They, If you have flicker, if you have any issues, they do very well with warranting that. Um, so you can send the bulbs back. Yes, it's a pickle on some vehicles to get back in there and take out the bulbs. But what I like to do is if one has flicker, I just order another set and return the other set once the other ones get in and I swap them out. Um, but you can usually establish that you should not have flicker. Um, but uh, I always like more lighting. Now, I've had people in the past say, you know, some of these lights seem awfully bright. Well, all of the new LED lights are super bright. Um, so if you go with the ones I put in the link below, you should pass any state inspection, no worry. Um, if you're going to go super bright or a off color like blue or green, I would discourage you from doing that because state laws won't probably allow that. So without further ado, we will go through how to do both sides here and uh, let's get rolling. So there's always going to be one side that's probably easier than the other. This side is the driver's side first. Now Subaru does put a little quirky neck in there so we can get behind to this light on the HID cover. Um, it has a plastic cover itself. You can see this gray cover right here. Do one bulb at a time and make sure that the numbers match up. Okay guys? So here it has this little plastic doodad, a body fastener. It has a Phillips head type thing. You're gonna turn it about a quarter turn. Then you can pop it up with a small flat bladed screwdriver and then pull this out. I'm gonna encourage you not to pry underneath the whole assembly to try and pop it out. Pop the body fastener out first. Now, once we get down in here, you can see that one bulb is easily accessible. Usually it's a quarter turn and it should pull pretty much right out. All right, once we take this one out, you can see that the connector is a push pull with a little tab right here to push down on. So what I always tell you is push the bulb in or fastener in, then push this down. You should hear a click, that's it releasing. And then we'll take a look at the new bulb versus the old bulb. So now that I have the bulb out, we can actually see some discoloring in the tip of that light. Interesting enough, the owner of this vehicle, um, very, very took very good care of the vehicle, did the maintenance well at a super specific place, replaced headlights quite often. I'm not sure why I haven't seen it, but they were replacing a headlight very, very often. It was like every 10,000 miles, but that discoloring right there. Now these bulbs are very finicky. Don't touch the glass. If you intend on reusing it, and if you're gonna try and wipe something off, um, I would be very careful to make sure that that cloth did not have oil on it. So now let's take a look at, once I get this sat down, we have our Sea Light brand lights. Now that first bulb is a 9005. Um, they always have the markings right there on the bottom or the elbow, or it is 9005 HB3 is the other moniker that we'll use. Now inside each box of Streamlight, sorry, Sea Light guys, uh, Streamlight's a flashlight. They're gonna give you extra gaskets. Pay attention to the gasket that is on your OEM headlight. Usually you don't have to swap these, but if you take that out and you have a blue gasket on it, make sure you match the blue gasket up, a black gasket, orange gasket, and so on. In addition, you, there are extras in here, meaning that if you want to swap this out later, you can. Um, so it's going to be about the same as it always was. Always make sure your connectors match up before you put these on. It's going to be a stick in, reinstall, quarter turn. Okay, guys. Now, a lot of people uh, have said, what about the, the can bus, that box down there? It's really uh, irrelevant. As long as it's out of the way, it's not going to get caught on anything. You don't have to use the zip ties that are included, but they do give you double-sided tape in each kit. So if you want to hard mount that to the frame or a piece of metal, you can. Again, just making sure that this extra Extra wiring is nowhere near any type of moving parts and you'll be good all right back inside guys this is the cooling fan you don't want to damage it the housing itself you can see that you have three little tabs on there the bulbs basically only going to go in one way and lock in one way so you really can't screw that up 
you can see that we're out of the way here. I just like letting, this, letting the wires lay, but if you wanted to, inside each kit, again, they have their warranty booklet, zip ties, and double-sided tape. And again, once it gets latched in there, you are good to go. So that is the first bulb, the 9005. If you're worried about this rattling around and stuff like that, you can zip tie it. Just remember access later, you're going to have to cut that zip tie off. So make sure you put it in a place you have access to. So now we're going to do the next one. We are going to check and uh, move this back and then we're going to remove this cover. It's basically a, like a quarter turn on that plastic cover behind there. It is a biscuit to see. All right, the cover is marked top. So when you put it back in, you'll put it in, quarter turn, latch it. We're going to set that bad boy out of the way. And then you can look down in here and see that we have one of the clip type removals. So we are going to just undo the clip and pull the bulb out. Now this bulb guys is an H7. So the kit is going to give you low beams and fog lamps. The other kit, you can do this install for less than 100 bucks, is going to give you this bad boy. Again, just like I've said before, if you intend on reusing this bulb, or say you have flicker and need to swap it out and send it back and get a new set, don't touch the filament on here um, at all. Now, sometimes Sea Light will give you some little white gloves. Those are for swapping these bulbs out, or you can keep that later for while you're drinking your Chardonnay and look all fancy. I've never uh, used them, but uh, those are available. As long as you don't touch it with your oils of your skin, you are good to go. So we will pull out the, the new one here. And again, looking good. We can kind of see the, the cooling and stuff. At the end of the day, you can also see the little square tab where it's going to hook onto the spring inside there. So now we're going to reverse the steps and plug this bad boy in. All right, guys, so I've set that in there. There's only one way that this bulb can go in there. You can see the grooves on the housing. That little spring clip's gonna hold it back in. Once we get that installed, we are going to just reconnect the connector on that one. Um, you can see that this one doesn't have the extra long wiring and stuff to it. And then we're gonna reinstall that dust cap. All right, so we can see that we got that before we put the dust cap back on. You can see how bright that is versus the stock one. So there is your low beam, and there is the high beam. Look how good that looks up there versus the stock one. Now again, you can just see the brightness over there on the poster itself. All right, now we got the cap back in. We're gonna take our little body fastener. Now guys, I will tell you that older plastics are brittle. I say that every dang video. Um, I will put a, a, a link to a description for body fasteners, kits that I keep in the garage. Um, just over time, I found that have worked good having that extra stuff in the garage. So that is the driver's side headlamp. Now we need to access the fog lamp. All right guys, underneath, this is how you're going to access the fog lamp. Now, if you have tiny hands, you can get through the back side of this panel. I do not. So, for ease of showing you, you'll need to remove the clip from here, the clip from here, and a clip from right here. As long as you're careful, use the right tools. I use these body panel fastener pullers. A link in the description will show you where I got them. Again, that's like six, seven bucks. Um, for as much as you'll pay for like one Sylvania bulb, um, you can easily buy these tools and get the job done. Now this is part of the fender liner, so we're going to pull it back and the access to the bulb is right in there, so I'll get some light in there. Alright guys, so the actual bulb is right here. It's just going to be a twist and pull and it has a connector right there. You're going to need to push it in, pull the connector off, and then pull the bulb out. Um, again, if you have small hands, no need to remove all this. You don't remove the whole fender liner. Um, like I said, the bulb is just right here. You'll be able to twist it and then pull it out just like that and then disconnect it. You can disconnect from the bulb first, however you want to play that out. But let's pull it out and install the new one. All right, guys, so now we got the LED. And remember, if you left your brights on, the fog lamp shut off, so keep that in mind. We'll probably get these polished up, but you can see, just looking at the light pattern, these are going to be gangsta at night. So now we're going to go ahead and reassemble the things. We're just going to pull that panel back and we're going to uh, put the clips back in. Now the passenger side is going to be the exact same process. The only thing you got to remove is this bad boy. So what you can do is you can lift these body retaining clips up 
and then this will slide out the back and then this just tips into the air box down there as you can see guys now we can actually access this side easier with less effort than the other one uh, fog lamp is going to be identical to the other side remove those two clips unless you have baby hands then you can go in the back side there um, but it is a little bit easier to do it that way so again counterclockwise turn here um, and then you're going to wiggle this bulb out, push-pull connector there, so we'll get the, this inside installed. So I will make note, these bulbs look like they are on their way out. You can see that discoloring. I'm going to go ahead and touch this bulb because I'm not going to reuse it. And that is on the inside, guys, so that's an indication that this bad boy is getting hotter than a blister. So, again, super easy there. So now we're just going to remember, look at the back side of the bulb itself that is 9005 hb3 is the other moniker we're going to go over here to our bulb box and i didn't show you this guys before but on the lights themselves they mark them so you really can't goof this up uh, on the install because you don't have to really uh, try and find that on there again pay attention to the gasket that is on the bulb itself making sure that if you got an orange Put back the orange so we are going to go ahead and just do these last two lights in the fog lamp real quick and then we'll take a look at how she looks all right guys we wrapped up the headlight install and the fog lamp install everything's back together again links to everything i use down in the description and if you have i don't know you can turn a screwdriver then you can do this install guys um, and gals whoever but it is a great upgrade um, and like i said this one when it's the construction of the headlight, the reason those bulbs are going out so often, the LEDs create a lot less heat. So that should help in the long run. And again, they have a good warranty and everything like that. Guys, I appreciate you being here. I hope you'll come back by smashing the subscribe button. We'll catch you on the next one.